Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to Judy Traders Tea Time with me, Darison Chalskas. Today is the 10th of April 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's afternoon uh, session, a recorded session, of course. Uh, as all where as always we're going to have a quick look at the markets a few of the charts um today of course is a very quiet day and for obvious reasons uh we understand why um so we have a good good friday um so most most Euro, europe well not most but all the european one european markets and the us markets are closed so uh but a few instruments are still moving so yep we'll pick up on those and uh but as always, guys, before we jump in into the charts, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so um, now then, uh, let's qu before we jump into charts, as always, quick mentioning of our GFD uh, YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JD Bank website and specifically our JD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on uh, jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there, guys. So, now then, uh, just also a quick update on the figure, what's happening here. Um, so, basically, let's quickly refresh this. Um, and, uh, yep, let's see how, how much has the figure changed from this morning. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we we have managed to grow about twelve thousand something uh, from this morning. So basically, or about ten thousand, sorry, uh, from this morning. So yep, uh, the the amount of deaths continues to rise, and the amount of total infected also continues to rise, guys. So. Um, Basically, jumping into a few charts here very quickly. So as you can see, there's not going to be many of those because, again, uh, not much is happening today. So, but just I wanted to quickly show you what's happening here in the S and in on the S and P on the S and P 500. Now, the index yesterday managed to. Uh, push further north, created a new higher high. Um, and uh, yes, uh, after like last time when we looked at this one, when I was talking about this barrier, the 2,637, what I was saying that if we get a nice break above this, then yep, this could continue pushing further north. Uh, we could then target the 2,729 zone, which is the lowest point of uh, June 2019. And uh, then, yes, we could consider a further move higher if this is just seen as a temporary obstacle. So this is exactly what happened. The index continued to drift higher and yesterday it closed uh, here basically um, uh, near near the uh, 2800 level, uh, just slightly below that, although it did overshoot it at one point, but still closed below it. However, uh, we will still remain positive, and if this index decides to retrace a little bit lower, as long as it stays above here, above this territory somewhere, uh, we will continue targeting the, uh, the upside, even, um, let's say, let me just quickly put this one on the chart. Even let's say if it travels even a little bit lower, still um, as long as it remains above this short-term tentative upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 23rd of March, then yes, we could see another round of buying and potentially we could be aiming for this uh, 2,900 level or uh, slightly above that 2,901 or two zone. But again, let's round it up towards the 2,900. That's gonna be our initial target for now, guys. Um, from the very, very short term perspective, we are uh, leaning more towards the upside. And uh, uh, if we draw a nice Fibonacci here retracement, you can see, guys, where we are right now. And uh, basically, the index ended uh, ended the week uh, this week and on the 50% retracement. So basically, it retraced 50% of its losses made from the all-time high here. Um, and uh, if we drag it all the way here towards the the lowest point of March, so basically it managed to recover already 50% of its losses. So that's good 
good news. However, again, we are still aiming for a bit more correction, but uh, don't get me wrong, overall, we're still bearish and um, we could see a hold up somewhere around here, maybe near this 200 EMA, uh, 200 day EMA here, and then yep, we could see another round of selling. But again, that's the idea for now. But from the very short term perspective, we are leaning more towards the upside, maybe like I said, going to for that for that 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci. Um, gold. Um, so gold is open today. I mean, it's trading is it's traded today. Um, and this is what I talked about recently, basically what I was saying that uh, this 1680 1681 zone, that's what we're uh, basically looking at, we were looking at for uh, because a break of this area kind of uh, would confirm a forthcoming higher high and it did so and our next target is around that psychological 1700 level or a little bit higher 170304 roughly around there that's the high of uh, the highest point of March and uh, for now you can see that gold continues to ride the rise uh, the big question here is can uh, this get a hold up here and uh, could we see a bit of a correction after that for now uh, we are more bullish than bearish on this one but like I said, we'll be very careful near the uh, 1700 level and the 1703 level as well. So because that's like I said, that's the high uh, of March. If that get level gets overcome and uh, if that level gets broken, then this could send the, uh, well, I should say, would send uh, the commodity even further north. Uh, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and a new high for this year would be established. So, uh, yep, guys, for now, um, if we do get a push higher and we do see a push above the 1703 zone, the next level to consider, and let me just go back into history here, uh, the next level to consider is around the 1723 zone, which is near the, um, let me just quickly uh, zoom in here. There we go. So that's near the um, near the high of the, um, let me just capture this little high, guys. Uh, there we go. So 1723, that's the high of the 12th of December, 2012. So um, keep your eyes on this one, guys. Uh, could be quite interesting for now. Yes, the commodity is drifting further north. Uh, let's see if it can actually reach this uh, 1703 zone. And it, let's see if it can get a hold up here. If it can, then we could see a bit of a correction here to the downside. Now, Ripple, jumping into Ripple. And Ripple is selling off. And uh, basically, um, for now, we are keeping a close eye on this little short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 16th of March. But um, if, if it fails to withhold and if we see it a break, of this upside line and then we see the the price falling below the 0 0.17 uh, 60 zone then well I mean this is where it could become very interesting for the sellers again and we could see this one drifting uh, back down again so for now uh, be very careful on this one here um, it is quite interesting but let's let's lot let's not get ahead of ourselves first let's see what he wants to do with this upside line if this upside line holds we could see a nice rebound and a push higher again uh, uh, and uh, the levels that we're going to be targeting, of course, will be these recent highs, or should I say the high of this week, which is around the 0 0.2052 zone. So if a nice good pop above this could, yep, lead uh, the uh, crypto even further north. But for now, it seems that the upside, um, well, it, I'm not saying that it could be slightly off the table, but uh, we'll be probably very careful with the upside right now because we are seeing a strong move lower and uh, we are near this upside support line. So let's see if it can hold. If it cannot, then we'll wait for a drop below the 0 0.18, uh, well, actually around 0.18. 0 0.1760 zone. If we see a drop below this, then yep, we will aim for lower levels. A USD CAD. Now, this is what I talked about this morning, and basically the pair continues to uh, trade below this uh, this key area of support. Oh, sorry, key area of resistance near the 1.1386 mark. And uh, well, I mean, what I was talking about this morning that if if this barrier continues to hold, then yep, we could see another slide. Uh, for those who are more on the cautious side you could just wait for a drop below the 1.3922 mark which is the low of uh, 27th of March and then yep we could aim for further declines for now we'll be very careful here and uh, yep keep your eyes on this level 
in terms of GBP USD. Now, something also that I've mentioned this morning, and uh, uh, basically what I was talking about, that uh, we need to see a push, a nice, good, strong push above the 1.24 uh, in order to aim for higher levels. To, you can see that it's slowly grinding higher. It's currently getting a hold up here. But the big question here is, can we see a weekly candle closing above this? So let's see uh, how this is going to play out. For now, everything's still kind of leaning more towards the upside. Our oscillators are showing some uh, a rising uh, upside momentum here. Um, so yep. Let's see if, if we can um, if we can get this level uh, broken, and if it does get br a break here, then yes, we will aim for higher levels like the 1.2726 or even higher. But again, for now, that's the main target for us because it also coincides with the 200 EMA here and is the low of the 28th of February, or in other words, the lowest point of February. So yep, that could be a good potential target. For now, the main question here is can this uh, pair remain above, the, or should I say, can it stay, and can first of all, can it break? Can it stay uh, and can it stay above this 1.2485 zone? Um, in terms of the downside, we'll, 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 we, as I've mentioned previously, we are uh, very conservative conservative here, and uh, we would probably consider uh, we, we should, would probably get a little bit more comfortable with the downside if we get a drop below the 1.1950. However, given that we already managed to shift away a lot to the upside. Um, probably keep your eyes on this little level here, the 1.2195. A drop below this could uh, open the door towards slightly lower levels up until this 1.1950 and then we would take it from there. And finally, G Euro USD. So this one, for this one, let me just jump into a four hour chart. Um, this one here is, uh, well, it's nowhere. And this is what I was talking about this morning. Basically, we are, uh, this morning, we were we were hanging around slightly above this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 9th of March. And uh, what I was saying that, yes, of course, this is a good indication that um, uh, higher levels could be met now, but uh, what I was saying as well that in order to get a little bit more comfortable, we need to see a push above this 200 EMA and then on the four hour chart, of course, and then we could aim for higher levels for now. It's stuck here. Um, let's see where this candle is going to end today, um, or should I say where the daily candle is going to end today. Uh, if we still manage to close, let's say on the four hour candle, we manage to close above this 200 EMA, then yes, keep your eyes on the daily candle. Um, and then, yep, if, if all this kind of is is if the pair continues to trade above this 200 EMA, then uh, yep, higher levels could be met, then we'll aim for the 1.1037 or even going further north. In terms of the downside, um, well, looking at this picture, of course, previously I talked about this 1.0777, this is still a more comfortable level for us to examine the uh, the, the downside. Um, but from the very short term perspective, if you want to look for something maybe up until here in this territory, then you could keep an eye on this little short term upside line. If we get a break below this, then yep, we could see a drift maybe towards this 1.0777. So yep, guys, keep your eyes on this one. Could be quite interesting, but probably the main action now will be um, next week. So let's let's wait for Monday and we'll see how everything's going to get along then. So now then, guys, um, I really hope you have a fantastic weekend. Um, I, first of all, of course, I hope you found this video video useful. It's a short one today. Well, understandable. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, I hope you stay safe. Um, try to kind of keep away from any <laughs> any infections. Let's put it this way. And uh, yeah, guys, stay healthy. And uh, I'll catch you on uh, on Monday, uh, as always, around uh, six o'clock GMT time in the morning. So yep, uh, catch my video then. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. We'll see how some of these instruments will play around play along and uh, how um, some new ones, we'll evaluate some new ones as well. So, uh, because I believe that next week could be an interesting one, um, uh, especially, uh, well, uh, not especially, but it, it could be an interesting one trading wise. So guys, stay safe, uh, be very careful. And uh, yep, I'll see you on Monday. Thank you very much and bye-bye.